pimp my coffin. <laughs> ah. Hi there, how are you? I'm Count Thacula. <laughs> Welcome to my video. So, probably about 15 years ago, I bought this coffin off this antique dealer, and it's, it's a 100-year-old coffin, real thing, never been used, obviously, because uh, there's nobody in it except me. Um, and I've had it and used it, rented it out for the film industry and, and done various things like that. Really like it. I think it's got a really cool, very creepy, neo-gothic vibe to it. The problem I find is these handles, you know, might have been circa 1920, but they look way too modern. I just don't like them, and I've always thought I want to swap them out for something a little bit more, um, I don't know, vampire-y, goth -y. Um Yeah, so... That is the video du jour, so let's begin. Let's go down to the forge. And first I want to get... No. Understand why vampires are so vicious. These things are really irritating. Okay, let's get to work. Okay, so here we go. So I came up with a design. Uh, essentially, I've got 11 inches um, is what my coffin is in height. Um, to work with so I came up with the design that fits within those parameters um, and in, I decided I wanted to do because of the vampire coffin thing I thought crucifix is a kind of a gothic thing with the a, a Celtic style cross um, which comes up and forms the handle in figuring out the whole logistics of that and how it worked I realized that inverted it worked better which also then uh, you know get that whole satanic panic sort of uh, thing I just saw a ghost a couple years ago at a um, at a big festival and they, they really use that motif in a, in a very almost comedy like way anyway it just seems to work so this is let me try to explain this here so I came up with this sort of gothic cross here but with the Celtic ring the ring will be a bar of five eighths round. I've already got a cut here. Um, and I'm gonna twist that and form that and it will come around and up and it will hinge into this. So when it lays vertically flat against the coffin, the ring will be laying here in its orientation and then you'll be able to pick it up and it'll have a stop on there that it comes out 90 degrees. Don't know if this is making sense, but it will when I build the thing. So anyway, the whole thing hinges and that's that's a pun there because there's a hinge here. On me making the ring right now and getting that the right size. The whole design kind of uh, came about by the size of a normal guy's hand to fit into the ring, kind of determined the size of that. My 11 inches determined the size of the cross, so I had to modify the proportions. I started out with this one here and realized that I needed to, um, oh, sorry, I've got, I'm looking at the wrong one here. What an idiot. This is the one that I actually, I had to squash it down to make everything fit. So this is the one that we're working with here. Oh, anyway, um, let's begin. I'm going to now put a rope twist on this and form it into a ring. All right, so here is my ring, um, and it kicks up here. This will then, when it hinges up, I actually drilled a hole here already. Um, didn't figure you guys needed to see that. So it will pivot up and become the handle there. So what is next is making this piece here. So I've got Maybe hard to see for you there, but kind of a harpoon sort of motif, a half arrow 
Um, and then this ear that comes up, which is the pivot point, this is very critical. So this will lay flat, there will be a twist to bring this up perpendicular, perpendicular, and then another twist to bring it back and then coming around, this all being one piece with a bend in the middle. Awkward because we need to do a lot of precision fitting to make that work. So let's rough out our first piece, try to fit into these dimensions and go from there. Okay, so I've got, I don't know if you can see this here, I need to bring this ear up um, for my second notch. And so it needs to be there. I need to get this out of here, but I don't really want to notch this on the anvil like the other one because things are going to thin out and stretch um, kind of uncontrollably. So I think what I'll do is actually punch out um, the next notch and I will use this guy hot punch if I can just get it set you know we're at a cherry red here you get that mark there that's what I need to have that radius B so that kind of um, nails that down and keeps us full thickness here so let's punch that out Okay, I'm gonna file that, get that cleaned up a little bit, and then we'll have to forge that out. Okay, that is that piece roughed out. I gotta do another one exactly like it, and then we gotta drill a hole in there. Uh, oh, right now let's let's do the top arm, shall we? It's the same motif just I have to get it so that I do half and half and it bends and becomes once. Well, let me just show you. All right, I just realized uh, as I'm letting these other pieces cool that I need connector bars here. Um, and I drew this in circles here just to give it a nice uh, underlying geometry. So the connection points are gonna be out here. Uh, and I decided what I was gonna do is just forge a ring out of three quarter by three sixteenths flat bar that is a true circle and that will um, become the connection points. So I'm just gonna make bend up that bar a hard way and make that ring so I can kind of set it on. Okay, so I've got all the pieces rough forged now. This one is still a little bit hot here, yes. Let's just get it aside and bring my paper. I think I need to do probably a little bit more refining, but at least there I've got the basic shape there. Um, so, well, let's talk about this ring first here. So I've got this, this will be the connector thing here. And what my intent is, is to have these guys here, it will be riveted onto 
that and then I will cut away the excess there. I decided to do this as a solid ring here just so when I put it together everything can stay nice and true. I don't have uh, this thing's going to be a logistical nightmare to assemble and it could easily distort. So I think by keeping this ring as a solid ring it's going to fix the outer points in place and then I can cut it away after. That's my theory. Let's see how that works. Anyway, let's get this out of the way it distracts. So here are the main pieces here and they will be sitting like this. They'll be an inch apart here um, to span this so that the pieces can go in there and now uh, this these ears are going to be flipped up. I've got to do some twists here and you'll see how this all comes out um, so that it can have our pivot point which is sitting up here and it'll sit down in there and then be able to pivot up there. So that is the tricky part of this is to get this movement to all work um, and everything function properly. Um, I suppose what I need to do now before I bend my arms here is just do a little bit more refining on these pieces, try to clean them up a little bit, get them straight, make sure everything's balanced, get the aesthetic looking right. What I'm going for here is rustic elegance, so I want it not to look overly precise, but at the same time it has to have that underlying geometry that everything from a distance has good lines, that it has good bones as it were. So, um, yeah, here we go. Okay, so twist, twist, bend, and repeat. So, let's see what happens. And there it is, and I'm cautiously optimistic this might actually work. So, yeah, these pieces are still a little bit hot here, but let me just see if I get this in here. I might have to do a little bit of filing and stuff. Okay, so I think what I need to do is there's going to be a little bit of clearance making there. I'm going to do a little bit of filing and stuff like that, but I think maybe the thing to do is assemble it first and then I can play with these ears and get them in position. That's going to be some fine tuning for sure, but that will come up to there. And yes, I am cautiously optimistic that things might work, so carry on. Okay, so holes are drilled. I ended up welding this together, tacking it to hold everything in place because I realized doing hole after hole, it would take a couple hours. So this was a 10 minute job doing it this way. I just have some cleanup to do after. So what I've done is drilled out all the holes, countersunk the backs here. These holes, by the way, are what fastens it to the coffin. But now I'm gonna rivet this on. I've got a brass rivet. This is a 3 16 round head rivet, 5 eighths of an inch long, which gives me enough shaft here that I should be able to. Just peen it down into the rivet set. And we've got a beautiful head on there. So a little brass will give us a little bling once we've got this thing polished out. All right, so my little ears are askew. So I'm going to just heat this whole thing up and get in with the wrench and maybe the hammer and just try to get them even out that I can get this piece in. And then I'll need to do some filing and grinding. A little bit of fiddly work ahead of us here.
All right, I went quiet a little bit there for a while because uh, when I got my hole put in there and I put my ring in place, it was off center. I realized I had to reshape the ring and I then I ended up actually moving the hole up um, about three eighths of an inch in order to get it to sit properly. So now it is sitting there well and it still lifts up. Um, to that point there, so I can lift it like a lid, it butts against there. I ended up putting a little tailpiece in there just to give it something to, to go against so it's not going too far past horizontal. So it functions, but it was fiddly, fiddly, fiddly. And what really is disappointing to me is that I need to make five more in order to um, complete the coffin. This one took many hours to do itself, and now I gotta do it again five more times. So anyway, And there we have it. So we got uh, the handle hangs like this, inverted crucifix, very uh, goth. And then as you lift it up, of course, it butts up against there, everything functions, it looks great. My only problem is I need to make five more. And uh, these things, <laughs> this was fiddly to make. So I'm not looking forward to that, but uh, once it's done, it will be a pretty a bitchin' coffin, if I do say so myself. Uh, very exciting and hopefully uh, I've got uh, heavy metal music video being filmed here in May a couple months from now. Uh, I'm hoping the guys might find this uh, a useful accoutrement for, uh, for the filming. So thank you for joining me on this one. Uh, we'll maybe get another updated shot when we get the entire coffin together so stay tuned. Uh, if you enjoyed this video then give me a like and uh, if you really enjoyed it subscribe and if you really really enjoyed it then think of uh, supporting us on Patreon. This takes a lot of effort to make these videos but we do have some fun while we're doing it. Um, so thanks a lot. Interested to see what kind of comments I get on this one. Back out. See ya!